Okay, we have a call to order for the uh, special meeting of the Village Economic Development Commission meeting for uh, June. And roll call, please. Jerry Cabasco. Here. Kirsten Erickson. Present. Robert Perry. Net here. Tracy Smadilla. Here. Nanette Gutenkoff. Here. Joel Laporte. Here. Adam Lewinsky, <coughs> Michelle Hughes are not present. Robert Gorski? Here. Okay, great. We have six people and we made quorum. Okay, next agenda item would be the approval of the April 11th, 2022 meeting minutes. Any discussion on the minutes? I move to approve the April 11th, um, 2022 meeting minutes as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, agenda item number four would be public comments. I see we have a guest in the audience. She is the no public comments. applicant. Okay, we'll move on to the next agenda item then would be uh, number five, Rebecca's Cakes by Design, a beta application request. Tony, you wanna lead the way? Mm. Thank you, uh, Chairman Kaposko. Uh, just quick background, because uh, we've seen this person before, but that was virtually while we were meeting via Zoom. And at that point, I had uh, explained how attracting a bakery to town had long been one of the goals, one of those businesses that elected officials frequently said we should bring to town. Uh, residents continued to say it, uh, economic development commissioners, uh, people just out in the community, the residents, it was one of those businesses that we were lacking for over 10 years until uh, Ms. Lesmeister and her, her husband and, and family came to us with their interest in moving from a home-based business that became so successful and popular that she sought out a space where she could um, have a commercial kitchen. And if you recall, uh, I hope you've all had the opportunity like I have to be there on multiple occasions. It's been located in the back rear portion of Main Street Plaza, which oddly enough has two different owners. It was built at two different times by two different developers. Um, so she had been in the rear facing unit, lower level in the back. And um, when we first met with her, when we first discussed her location where she's been, she expressed interest. She came in for a small beta grant, which um, was later approved and granted. She said that when her lease expired, it was her hope to succeed to the point where she could expand into a larger unit. Um, this last paragraph on this first bullet point, I can't stress enough that staff in the form of Scott and myself I'm sure uh, Rebecca would attest to, had numerous phone calls and numerous meetings and did the best that we possibly could to uh, try to help make this relocation and expansion happen. 
uh, with the landlord and with the business person. So we worked very closely with them for a number of months, long before you started seeing this move start to happen and her here tonight. So they're currently working on converting, uh, if you recall, prior to Rakesh Chopra relocating Delicious from town center to streets of Bartlett, the last occupant of that space was Delicious Crepes. Uh, so as you recall, they, they just prepared food really with a hot plate. There was no real heavy duty kitchen equipment, uh, ventilation, ovens, stuff like that. So we've been working with them to bring their bakery into a larger, more modern uh, restaurant, code compliant of course, bakery, but also offering coffee, espresso, and breakfast items in addition to the treats that have become very well known in our town in, over the past two years. So in the packet before you, in the beta application details uh, her business plan. She, she presented a business plan two years ago that we can all attest to. She hit all the check marks in that plan. What she said she was gonna do, she did them. Um, this particular project um, as projects often do, continued to get more and more pricey as, as uh, labor and materials and, and, and as, as the expansion took shape <clears throat> to the point where the business plan with the quotes totaled $46,960 in improvements. So, like I mentioned, this used to be a crepe restaurant, but what you all need to consider, this is a full build out of the space being reconfigured from its current state to a bakery that I just peeked in for a few minutes. And so the work includes electrical, drywall, plumbing, general construction, bakery equipment, a water purifier, and an exterior sign. The largest line item in this is bakery equipment, $22,000 worth, $8,000 worth of plumbing improvements, $6,900 for painting, and a new sign for about $5,000. I'm not gonna go through her whole business plan, but it details uh, her expertise in baking and her vast experience in the field. Uh, she worked in baking for many years prior to taking this giant leap of faith and opening her own bakery. So she's continuing her passion for baking, serving the community need by providing baked goods that are not only delicious and safe, but a work of art. They're very beautiful if you follow her social media or step into the bakery. Her beta application uh, includes a detailed marketing plan. I mentioned she has demonstrated the ability previously through the past two years. Uh, there's really not a local event that you won't spot her at. Um, she sponsors many local events and organizations. She's aware of the need for allergy friendly baked goods and she fills this needs uh, her bakery is uh, nut free and she's there. Um, if you go in, you know, whether you, you walk in first thing in the morning or at closing, of course she's a busy lady and, and has to run around town once in a while, but this is, uh, this is the, um, an entrepreneur who's present at her place of business basically every time I go in there, no matter what time of day, she's always there. Uh, she hopes, she, so she's grown this business from a one woman shop um, and hopes to hire two additional full time employees and two additional part time employees within a year of opening. So, besides this expansion that should boost her business, it's going to increase uh, employee count by a little bit. So, we look at the beta program on a case-by-case -case basis with applications. Uh, some of them you see come in and like Mr. Rafidia do millions of dollars worth of work. Some of them you come in and you see a new sign for a couple of thousand dollars like last meeting. Um, this bakery uh, build out I mentioned uh, is close to 47,000. We feel comfortable recommending the highest percentage for this, which is 50%. That amount comes out to $23,480.12. And I thought it's worth mentioning that this is 
uh, our first meeting uh, this new fiscal year, which starts May 1. So we have $250,000. Uh, right now, the unpaid beta grants that have already been approved include 50,000 for Banbury Fair, which you can see them working on with the water and sewer they're, they're having, they've already had installed. Uh, 1992 for Geek Inc. Comics for their new sign and 2000 for the Dog Father for their new sign. So, and of course you see Ms. Lesmeister is here, uh, the, the star baker of the village to answer any questions that you may have uh, regarding her project. Tony, can I ask a question about the beta that we've already committed to but hasn't um, come to fruition yet and been paid? Does that come out of this fiscal year because we committed to it last year? It comes out of last year. It does. Um, I, think, I think Commissioner Gorski did ask that last month. Okay. So when, when the beta fund is, pr is funded, uh, we use the village's share of video gaming revenues to fund that. And it becomes just like another line item in our village budget. So whatever is unspent on April 30th, we have yet in four years, we've yet to spend the entire amount. Uh, the closest we came was a year when I believe Manny Rafidia came in for his second beta and also 120 Live. So there were two $50,000 ones. I think the most we've ever spent is maybe about 130, 140,000. So as of now, this fiscal year, we've paid zero. Okay. But the ones we anticipate paying so far come out to 54,000. And if you added this one, 54, 74, 78,000. Um, we do have some other applicants we're working with in earlier stages. But uh, hopefully that answers your question. It's a new fiscal year. So no, it when we have to pay for it whatever year we pay it out. One more thing I just want to add is that let's say we're sitting here in February or March with a beta grant, chances are we would pay that out next fiscal year. So as long as you think of it as kind of a rolling basis, uh, you can be more comfortable with the funding mechanism. That's what I was going to add is just for further clarification and the way you answered it last time was that this 50,000, even though it was approved last year, will be this year's spending, not last year's spending. Right. Well, and I think it's good, too, that we are outpacing previous years. That's our goal of this entire program because, I mean, our biggest year was 100000 in this budget line. So, I mean, it would be nice to say, I'm sorry, you came too late to the party to apply for money. So, I right. mean, it's, that, that is the whole goal of this is to get this ball rolling and to give this money. This is a line item. This is intended to be used for growth and development. So, Good point. Yeah, we're not trying to – we're trying to – leverage it mm -hmm. to encourage private investment and we have uh, a lot of uh, projects out there for businesses you could visit right now that wouldn't be there if it wasn't for this added um, incentive so that that's that's the right way to think about it and the right way for us to use it i have a question with relate related to the equipment there's a lot of equipment in here um and i'm anticipating that all of it is new are you going to be bringing any equipment from your old place to complement this or? Yes. Rebecca, go to the Yeah. Place. And we'll see if the, the green light is on. Um, so we are actually bringing almost all of our equipment from the old place. Okay. Um, due to the amount of growth that we've had in the last year and a half. Um, we just needed more equipment. So now we're going to be running on two ovens instead of one. Um, we ended up upgrading our uh, bakery cases. So now we have very nice, larger bakery cases that can hold more, which is going to be helpful with the new place because we are forward facing even before we are opening. I have people opening the door and asking if they could come in and purchase things on a daily basis. Um, so all of the things that we are purchasing right now are to enhance what we're currently doing and make things better. Great, thank you. Yeah. So, so Rebecca, you're saying that you're taking all of that equipment into the new space, okay. What was the original beta grant for? I didn't see it in the previous minutes. I believe it was for about $7,000. Yeah, we received about seven. <laughs> it was about seven, but it wasn't 50%. 
Um, I think I think it was probably more like a 30 percent. Yeah, we did about 22 or 23 thousand dollars, and then we ended up getting about seven the last time. Yeah. I mean, two two years ago, we were still the program was a little newer, and and we had some other projects that we we thought you know we were we were keep, you know, keeping the budget numbers in mind more, um, and you know I don't think we would. I think if she was coming here for the first time, we'd be more reluctant to recommend 50%, but over how she's proven her desire and ability to make this successful over the past two years. So it was, yeah, it was like a 7,000-ish beta grant out of about 27, 28 that they spent. This is a much more detailed um, and quite frankly, a lot nicer looking build out than, than what they've had. Well, you'll be impressed when you see it. I have a question about your budget, and, and, and thank you for providing one that's so detailed. Um, you estimated that your, um, your 2021 gross sales were just over $230,000. Um, looking ahead to, um, so you had 231000 in this, this particular space. Are you, on, um, are you on pace for 2022 to still hit that budget? Yes. So we will definitely hit that right now where I'm at with what we've made since January. We are currently at about a little bit ahead of what we did last year. Um, and we expect to, with this new space, be able to at least do a quarter, if not half more than what we currently are doing. Okay, so, so another 50% more than what we were currently making in a month. So you're anticipating additional 50% 50, 50 in gross revenue sales. Okay. Now that is like halfway through the year though, so it might be 25% by the time we get there, just because we're halfway through the year already. But yes, we're hoping for about 50% more. Okay. What's the uh, tax benefit to the village on, a, on, on food sales? You, the village has an automatic 1%. Okay. And but they, the village also added a home rule sales tax um, probably about four or five years ago. So it comes out to about 2%. Okay, great. Yeah. And, and beyond the benefit, just the, the taxpayers, we, uh, if you look back at several of our strategic plans, uh, the one in 2016 that we did where we invited every single person to the community You'll see, you know, our our uh, folks who put together our strategic plan, which is the Northern Illinois Department of Governmental Studies. They put together where you can do like keyword, key searches, and bakery came up time and time again. And every meeting, every stakeholder meeting that we have, bakery has been one of those hot topics. And uh, we haven't had one in, like you said, uh, so several years. So to have one forward facing. Um, it's just going to be a huge, huge benefit to the community. And um, I don't like to get too emotional when, when I sit here and talk professionally like this, but I can say I've never actually been more proud of, of somebody, and I've never been more proud of a recommendation and the work that Tony has done with Rebecca, because you can look at the analytics, and you can look at the data, and you can look at the words that Tony types, but um, when it comes to sweat equity, which, you, which you're not gonna see in an ROI or a data-driven document. I've actually never met a small business owner with more sweat equity than Rebecca. And I've never met somebody that's been one step ahead of us the whole time. Well, you need to join the chamber. Oh, I already did. You need to get in the craft fair. Oh, I already did. You need to schedule a video uh, for us. Oh, I already did. I mean, every single suggestion that we have for her she implements it, and she implements it before we even suggest it. So beyond some of the analytics, I think it's important that, that you folks know that, that when we recommend these monies, we don't just look at the analytics, we look at things like sweat equity, involvement in the community. She's a resident. Um, and I'll be quite honest with you, when we first sat down and we talked about the initial beta, and she was downstairs below Main Street Plaza, I, I wasn't too crazy about it, um, but I was wrong. That slow, mature, methodical growth. 
That's economic gardening 101. Starts from her home, makes a leap to a location that's okay, continues to grow, makes sure, okay. makes sure that she can handle the, the business and, and handle the growth. And, and then she jumps to a, a location that is front and center in the geographical center of our community. So uh, I'll say out of all the betas that we've talked about and recommended, um, we're so proud of this and we're proud of this business and it's right on Main Street front and center. So it's really exciting, yeah. Um, but also to add to your tax question, um, we actually do most of our purchasing through Bartlett. So we go through Greco and Sons. I go to Jewel when I'm running out of things or there's little odds and ends that Greco doesn't have. We also employ currently three Bartlett residents and we're hoping to get more Bartlett residents rather than outside of Bartlett. We are really, excited about being in the community and having that be our centerfold. So I really try to pick businesses here before I go anywhere else. Yeah, and I think it's great to the location that you've picked. I mean, we've talked about your location and I couldn't agree more when she was down there. I was kind of like, man, you're gonna outgrow this, thank God, <laughs> you know? Um, and I think it is amazing to see you fill a spot in such a prime location that really can benefit from that type of business there. And I think that the other businesses, very much like Main Street, like the plaza, we're gonna start seeing that it's gonna attract others that are gonna be going in because that becomes the destination. So I think it's the right fit for that location. You've already proven that you're successful. You've already networked, you've already reached out, you've already got a, a growth going, so I think it's the perfect time and the perfect place to put a business like that. And I would agree. I think you've done a great job and you are involved in everything and so generous and um, I'm so excited for you. Thank you. Plus, we have all these fitness centers in town. Somebody's <laughs> got to make sure they have business. <laughs> it's true. You've enjoyed she makes the best cinnamon roll mm -hmm. in the world. You ride two hours on your bike and you could burn it off. <laughs> Lemon bars. Mm. It's an hour and a half. Uh, I have a question with regards to uh, potentially outgrowing this space. Are your current lease terms flexible if you need to buy your own space or go to a larger space five years down the road? So we actually signed this lease for five years in hopes to either, we can either renew, we've talked to them both ways, um, either renew in five years or there's a possibility of us purchasing a place and then renovating that to create our like final destination which will be larger. We would really like a freestanding building. Obviously there's not a lot of places right now. We looked there first before we decided to rent here. Um, and we, we wanted to make sure that we did it in steps so that we didn't overdo ourselves and put ourselves out. So we, um, we decided that five years here and then depending upon how we grow, if it works, we could even bust out the unit next to us because that one is currently not rented um, and the last rent they had, they were only doing two year rents for there. So. There's a possibility in going either direction. There's also more space on the back where I could take a space there just for baking and connect it through. So there's a lot of options for us, um, but it will be about a five-year lease. Does the wholesale business provide steady income? And if it does, would you increase that? Because sometimes retail is a little fickle. Definitely, yes. We are, um, we're currently working with 120 Live and we wholesale all of their desserts to them. Um, we had a couple other people that we were working with that it just wasn't the right fit. So we definitely wanna do more wholesale. We have a lot of ideas um, in some of our products that we can mass produce and be able to wholesale to larger companies, um, but we are still in stepping stones for that, so I can't say much about those yet. <laughs> But yes, our plan is to pull in more wholesaling so that we kind of have a weekly steady base. But our custom cakes alone are what are floating us. Our front sales are just icing on the cake. Rebecca, what's your average ticket price on those? 
custom cakes? Yes, it, because it looks like um, that's it looks like that's really what's driving your your sales right now. Um, it really depends on the person, but on average, they're two hundred plus okay. per cake. Um, I'm typically doing thirty to forty cakes a week, and that I mean some of those are like sixty dollar cakes. Some of them are $500 cakes. Some of them are the cakes plus a whole dessert table. So depending on what the customer wants, especially with graduation and weddings this year, like this past week, we did four weddings. So, so you're basically doing event catering then as well? Yes, okay. definitely. And one thing that we really like that actually wasn't in this document at the time it was transcribed because it was, we don't just pump out the document and then wait. We talk to these folks every day. 10% um, of their sales are actually out of town based on their credit card and debit card swipes. Um, that's a, for a, a bakery in Bartlett at the location that she was at. Um, boy, that's pretty good uh, for down there, 10% out of town. So um, that was a number that we liked as well. And I can only imagine going from down there to up there, that 10%. That uh, will continue to grow as well. Okay, that appears to uh, end the discussion for the uh, Beauty Grant. Thank you for your input. Next step would be uh, anyone want to make a motion to approve the uh, request? I would like to make a motion that we support the request in the amount of $23,480.12, which results 50% of what the build out is. And a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Motion carries, and we'll bring, Rebecca will bring this recommendation from the Economic Development Commission to an upcoming Village Board Committee meeting and Scott and I will let you know all about when that will be. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to mention she, she has the potential to be our first third applicant for when you were asking about five years down the road and wouldn't that be something? Let's keep you busy with some other businesses too. Right, lots lot between now and then. Okay, next agenda item would be new business. Tony, you want to? Yeah, I have some new business that? to report. And uh, I'll tell you that this is the reason why I haven't updated the Bartlett Dining Guide uh, yet this summer. Because there's, in addition to our, our Star Baker relocating into a bigger space, uh, we have three different restaurant items to report since our last meeting and somewhat interrelated in some ways. Um, you've all probably seen that Bovino uh, closed on June 1st in Streets of Bartlett. And we, within about a week, this is kind of a testament to the way uh, Mr. Rafidia works and his vast network of businesses through his 16 or 18 shopping centers. Uh, less than a week later, we were already engaging with uh, new restaurant tour. So that's going to be, uh, there's a restaurant in Streamwood called Indian Foodie, kind of a, in an older, kind of smaller strip center space. And they're going to be expanding uh, their space. Of course, Bovino is be uh, beautifully built out and much larger than that. And they're going to expand their menu as well. So we're going to have an Indian restaurant in Streets of Bartlett. Now you all recall about three, three and a half years ago, four years ago, our first beta applicant was an Indian restaurateur, uh, Indian Express, uh, AJ Tantuwaya. So he has sold his business. And uh, Westgate Commons, he, he owned, he purchased that unit and built it out into a restaurant. So he sold the unit and the business and also, I'm working with a restaurant tour on that site as recently as this afternoon. Um, that's going to become a Colombian restaurant. 
and the village has never had a Colombian restaurant since I've been here. I'm, I'm assuming this will be the first Colombian restaurant in the village. So we lose the one Indian restaurant in town, but we're getting an Indian restaurant in Streets of Bartlett, and we're going to have a Colombian restaurant which features empanadas and rice types of dishes and chicken, pork, all kinds of delicious foods over there. And then um, I'd also third one I'd like to mention uh, is something uh, Scott and I have been working uh, very hard on for at least a year, if not longer, but it's going to hit the local newswire probably within the week, is Bannerman's. So Bannerman's has been in Bartlett Commons for going on 15 years. You all remember when Murray Friedman opened it back in the day. Uh, he sold his business, which of course is a leasehold in that shopping center. He sold it about four years ago to a guy who goes by the name of Mac, Mac Sood. Uh, similar to some of these other businesses, his, uh, his business has flourished and grown. He's been paying a pretty high amount of rent because it's a very large space. Uh, to the point where he decided to pursue a freestanding location. We went through, I can assure you, probably every open piece of undeveloped land in our town before we ultimately agreed that relocating into Brewster Creek Business Park would be an interesting idea, especially considering that he wants to dramatically expand his live music offerings and offer outdoor type of activities, you know, um, whatever they may be, or volleyball or horseshoes or whatever. So ultimately, he has uh, started pursuing a site in Brewster Creek Business Park. Again, I say we've been working, Scott and I, when we allude to all these businesses that we're working with, um, you know, several months uh, talking about potential incentives and what we can do to help facilitate this development. We're excited that it would be the first eating and drinking establishment in Brewster Creek Business Park that could cater to all the employees out there, all the vendors, all the customers, um, but also, as I mentioned, uh, a nice large outdoor space that would be hard to find in a neighborhood well, that's the challenge they had before. They yeah. Were, yeah, the neighbors were opposing their, their, their outdoor entertainment expansion. Yeah, I mean, and not only, he, he, when we talk about it with him, he's not just going to continue. He, he, they do have a lot of concerts. They already typically have one a week average or sometimes more. But it's his plans to continue and expand that. So it could become really... I honestly think it could become the premier sports bar slash, you know, smaller concert venue within this area. Not just Bartlett. I think you put <coughs> four, five, six towns in a big circle around Bartlett, and I think that'll be the go-to place for that kind of event. So what he's looking at is doing a 10,000 square foot freestanding restaurant. Anyway, I don't want to beat it to death, but this is one of the restaurants we've been working with came up we can share it because he's come up uh, before the board with some concept plans as well as an incentive offer that we made not beta grant because we exclude the ex uh, current TIF districts from beta so the grant the the incentive that we offered him that we devised for this project to keep it in Bartlett when he had options to go to some uh, two other communities was um, it's it's from the Brewster Creek Business Park TIF, which I'll talk about probably in a meeting or two down the road because that's coming to a close in the near future. But it seems like a great project to kind of end the TIF with and a good use of TIF funds, uh, keeping uh, one of the businesses like Rebecca's Bakery that's well known to be a Bartlett unique business. So I wanted to make sure you all were aware of that. that that's a big project coming up. And that's all I have for new business for tonight.
Did Bartlett ever consider building a band shelf? Something very basic. There's one out in Oswego where they just took a vacant parking lot that was going to be uh, a future metro station. And all they did was laid a concrete slab, four steel beams, and an angled roof. They had Vince Neal play there last summer, and uh, they advertise it on their Facebook all the time. It's more local bands, but instead of having the portable stage like we have at uh, the Fourth of July festival, it's a just a band shell. I wouldn't think there'd be that much capital investment if it was our existing property. And then all the, the local townspeople bring blankets and, and lawn chairs and whatnot. So just food for thought along the lines of the Bannermans. It's a good suggestion. I don't, I don't know if it's ever been considered. I know the library has some nice concerts that they do called Fravinia a few times per summer and we, we promote that. It really seems like Bannerman's is gonna become the premier venue, at least for the village, probably for, for these concerts. And they get pretty they get the they get pretty good bands there. Um, it's something we could, you know, take under under consideration. Well if you look at fest, uh, fe what was Festival Park in Elgin, um, the casino at that time prior to it being sold, um, had I mean, some really, you know, t top entertainment out there. And again, per more of a permanent uh, band shell structure. Um, if there was some, an idea to do something temporary, uh, Rosemont has got an exceptional summer concert series uh, constructing a, a band shell that again is taken down in the winter time. But again, um, the draw is phenomenal, and um, I can attest to all of the restaurants and retailers in that entertainment district being extremely happy with the results on it. Um, they've, they, they, the business has actually created their own fund specifically for uh, attracting um, that talent that performs out there. And again, I think it's going into about its fifth year and very, very successful out there. Very good. Going back to um, Bannerman's and the uh, 10,000 square feet, the lot of land that they're looking at, is there open space around that as well in this particular lot that they're looking at? Well, there is. Um, they're buying a larger lot than the area just that Bannerman's will be on. Sure. Um, it's, I don't know if open space is the right term because it's on, it's on uh, I believe, Hart circle it's called so it's in it it's really in pretty well in there in the business park um, i don't know how familiar you are with the business park uh, commissioner gorski we do a tour every summer it might be in the next couple of months we might do another tour of the business park we can point out where it'll go mm -hmm. so it's it's about as far from you know residents as you can get I suppose for a development site, if that's kind of what you're asking. Well, part of the reason there's a part, pretty good amount of open space yeah, in the business. Part, part of the reason my question, I had brought this up before about the fact that you have so many now employees working in this Brewster Creek business park, mm -hmm. and where are they going for lunch? And at the time, it was well, everybody's going to drive out to Route 59 and get their food somewhere on Route 59. Now there's a food venue inside and maybe other food venues can join that so that people have options for lunch if you have so many employees working in this park. Yeah. That's why I asked about the space. Yeah, it's a good question then. Yeah, it, that was part of our thought process too. Not just the, I mean, it's, it's pretty challenging to find a space where you can do a sports bar of that magnitude. Sure. Um, like I said, we, I could go site by site and characterize it that we have a lot of infill sites that are like a couple of acres, but there's houses right nearby. Then you've got 59 in West Bartlett that's just some massive 100 acre plus site that's not gonna really develop with like a local mom and pop type business. That's gonna probably be more of like a national site. Um, so yeah, there is a lot of space out there, but catering to the clientele in the business park is a big, you know, that, that's a big draw to it from, for, Mr. Maksud, mm -hmm. um, a lot of the people who work at those businesses don't have the luxury of an hour long lunch. We talk with him a lot about kind of a quick, cheap lunch option. You know, you're like 10 or 15 minute guaranteed 
burger, fries, and drink type of scenario, um, as well as up, you know possibly upgrading the the menu for you know nights and weekends or rotating specials. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm I, I'm not prepared to talk about maybe every detail of the project, but it's a multi-million dollar project, not just multi, it's multi-multi. So he's done a, a tremendous amount of due diligence in terms of analyzing the market, um, you know, how many of his existing customers will be willing to drive an extra mile and a half or so into a business park. We all know that there's uh, successful microbreweries and businesses within industrial parks in the Chicago area. Uh, land is much more affordable in, in an industrial park. I can't stress, I, I think Scott and I probably worked on this for 50 hours with him. So, I mean, we've been through all, every detail with him. Um, and that's, he's pinning a lot of, of his hopes on that, getting a lot of, remember, it's not just the, six or seven thousand employees in the business park it's you know when you have like uh like ms lesmeister uh mentioned greco foods i mean there's there's companies in the business park that you may not even really know exactly who they are or what they do but some of them have two or three hundred possible customers a day come to the business come to their business i mean we've got the mckesson uh, distribu regional distribution center up and running there. I mean, who knows how many people will visit that. Um, ITW, I could go, I could talk all day about the business park. So besides the employees of the business park, think of all the thousands of vehicles per day that drive in and out of the park. Well, the proximity, We're hoping they capture yeah, the a lot of them. proximity to West Chicago and St. Charles is brilliant. And again, when you look at the demographic out of St. Charles and you look at the businesses in St. Charles, they have nothing like this. So again, I think a large concert venue um, that had a, a yeah, good well, restaurant is. And we've talked too, <clears throat> if you look back a couple years ago, I think even Commissioner Laporte brought it up, you know, how can we show residents what's going on in the business park? That's come up multiple times at these EDC meetings and we probably haven't had the best answers in the world. But I'll tell you, this, this certainly will put that uh, business park on display and have some connectivity to our residents. You know, you can't go there for a burger, buy a pair of shoes, so common everyday resident may not go to the business park. And now they'll, now they'll see that. So um, that's another uh, connectivity aspect that we like as well. Yeah, we, we think there could be a lot of meetings there uh, when somebody comes in. Um, we haven't really gotten to this point with Mr. Maksud, but he's he's pretty open to our suggestions and he takes them, you know, very seriously. And a lot of businesses in our town, a, a real lot of them, um, try to get their foot in the door in the business park, but it can be difficult to establish corporate accounts for, let's say, a restaurant in the downtown. Um, I mean, he's he's perfect to do corporate accounts for Greco, for Rana, for Get Fresh, for ITW, I could talk, for Auto Truck. What better place to meet for lunch if you're gonna tour Auto Truck facility? There's not a better place to go to lunch than a new 10,000 square foot sports bar venue across the street. So Bannerman's currently has how many video gaming machines? I think six, is, six the limit, is the limit, so probably has six. So is this is this one of the new um, establishments that would qualify for a sports book as well? I don't know. I, I couldn't even guess. I don't know if he had floated that at all. Yeah, it's the state right now. It's a special license. I, we haven't. Well, sure, I know it's a special license, but again, you think about a, sport, uh, a restaurant, a sports bar in particular, um, I mean, you start to see, you even see those in smaller venues in the city of Chicago. Yeah, I don't know enough about that, but that's a great suggestion that we'll pass along to him just to keep his eye on it. That seems like the type of venue that would qualify. Yeah. yeah. I've noticed there's some life at that facility on Devon and Bartlett Road. The, uh, yes, finally. What, is it fully occupied? Do we know anything about it? Well, I do, and I have some extremely sad news that I just learned 
uh, last week is the developer that we'd been working with on that passed away about two weeks ago, Dimitri, and I can't, I'm not even gonna try to really say his last name, but um, he passed away. He has brokers and I mean, this guy has had millions of square feet of industrial product, of, of properties. Scott and I happened to have visited him at a very large facility that he owned in Addison because we were meeting with his first potential tenant, uh, another one of those ones we've been working with for a long time. At the point where uh, I last spoke with him about a month and a half ago, he had it fully leased. And it's divided into three units. I think now I can probably tell the EDC tonight that one of the businesses I've been working with to locate there for probably about a year is called Closets by Design. And as the name suggests, it's one of these businesses you hire to build out and to customize your closet. They've been uh, headquartered in Addison in one of Dimitri's other buildings. So long story short, now that that building's just about finished, after five years, um, yeah, the owner of it passed away. Um, but we're still anticipating that building getting filled nonetheless. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been over five years. And I should, before I sound like I'm, we've, we've asked, people have asked on the EDC for years about that building. Part of it was due to the owner's health issues um, that, that have caused a few of the delays. Okay, that concludes our new business discussion. Next item on the agenda would uh, adjournment. Looking for a motion to adjourn. A motion we adjourn. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Meeting is adjourned.